Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios, and before we get started on this video, I need to give a warning right now. If you don't know how to reset your BIOS, learn how to do that. Because if you tweak too far, there is a 100% chance you'll get a blank screen. Reset your BIOS, know how to do that. Then we want to continue on with this because the reward is quite great, especially with Ryzen processors. And if you have a great video card, graphics card, and you have a good CPU, you can literally see results, especially at lower resolutions, of say 120 frames per second up to 140, just based upon tweaking your memory. Welcome to a part of my video series on stopping the stutter as well as memory tweaking. Because if you have your memory speed set too high, you can actually cause performance issues. For example, if you have a Ryzen 1000 or 2000 series, or say a 3000G processor, you'll get a bunch of stuttering if you're clocking too high. Or even with the 5000 series AMD processors, if you go over 3600 megahertz, you could actually have a performance regression based on the clock speed of what's called the Infinity Fabric. For Intel, you have different boards that have limited memory speeds, and when you go beyond those limited memory speeds, or you might not be able to reach them at all, what happens again is, well, you could have instability, or two, it just won't reach the speeds. So what do you do if you can't take full advantage of your memory? Well, there are things you can do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you that. But also, if you have like major stuttering in games, if your memory is not set properly, or if you actually don't have a new enough BIOS that is based on old standards, you could be getting performance issues. Now, what I wanna do now, is go into the BIOS. So the motherboard I'm using right now is a MSI MPG B550i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. So your motherboard configuration will be different based upon which one you're using. And this B550 can easily run at my full memory speed at 3600. However, if you can't, what do we do? If we only can run say 2933 like some Intel boards are limited to and some AMD CPUs are limited to, we go to the advanced configuration where you can actually change your memory. So here's my regular speed, default speed for my particular memory. You can go to DRAM configuration. And remember, before you do any of this here, any of these tweaking, make sure you know how to reset your BIOS. That is very, 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 very important. And I can't express how important it is because if you go too far, you can get a blank screen and you have to be able to reset your BIOS. Be you it take out your battery or find the jumper that will say clear CMOS or it might say BIOS reset. Now, what we can do here is actually subtract the speed. Let's see if I can find the button. There we go. And then I can do everything else. So normally if your numbers are like 21, 21, 21, you'll just reduce by one at a time to find where you're limited to. So these main ones here. Your TRAS is generally what it's going to be no matter what your speed to a certain point. So that's kind of a risky place to play with. So in general, I wouldn't do that. And for your TRC, it's actually normally your TRP plus TRAS speed. But sometimes you can't get down to that speed. Sometimes on your TRC, you'll have to go up a step or two because the TRC is the TRP plus TRAS fastest possible timing. But sometimes you have to set slightly slower on your TRC. And of course, this will actually save speed because what this is is a timing of this plus this before you go into your next procedure. All these timings are how long the delay is. So obviously I reduced the delay so I can get more performance. Gear down mode is a way I can get more stability if uh, the RAM needs a gear down mode, which I'm not sure if Intel has that, but otherwise you give a T1 is fastest, T2 is the slowest, but I run T1 and gear down mode. Next thing you would do is just save it. So I'll click yes to save, and you would actually try out your memory. And let's say it's stable, which I know this will be stable. I'll go to the next step and next step down. So I'm gonna wait for my BIOS to load right now. And once it loads, in this particular case, normally you'd go to testing. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the next step down. I'm actually gonna take a couple steps down, I believe here. RAM timings again. And I'm gonna bring this down. 
some more. And because the XMP profile is 17 on these timings, and I believe 15 on this uh, on here at the speed of 3000. Sometimes RAM has two different timings for XMP profiles, so you can actually run it two different speeds and it'll tweak your timing for you. And one thing to note, if you use CPID or CPU-Z that is, you can actually have multiple XMP profiles for your particular memory. So you might be wondering, do I choose number one or two? If you use that program, which I do list in another video, down in the description of this video, you'll see the different links to different videos, including how to install CPU ID. So I'm not repeating myself video after video after video. And of course, if you don't know how to set XMP, my video will tell you that as well. So I can save. So right now we're obviously running way tighter timings. This could be way faster, 29.33. So I'm actually running at the XMP profile for full speed and adjust the timing manually. So the question is, will Windows be stable? Still want to find a program that can actually test your computer to see, but you don't always find out right, right away if it actually is stable. So I might want to run a program like Cinebench a couple times, or um, let's see if I can find one that's more specifically to, uh, to actually test. So in this program here, this is a DRAM calculator for Ryzen. If it can run on Intel processors, which I can't test, but this is a great program for actually testing if it's stable or not, and you run the program. So I've now run the test and I see zero errors. I may want to run this multiple times to see if I actually get any errors from a multiple test to make sure of stability. But let's say if you can't run this program or you want to test something out as well. Another program you could test is Prime95. So I'm going to close this here. So here we have Prime95, and you want to go to Blend Tests. So that Blend has lots of RAM tested, and you want to run it for, well, some time, maybe several hours. And if there's an error, you'll see one of these windows go red on one of your cores, because that means, well, you have an error, and you're, there's a problem with your CPU stability or your memory stability. So if you're wondering what I run my particular memory at, which is Kingston, DDR 3600, it's a Fury memory, which is 216 gigabyte sticks, which makes 32 gigabytes of RAM. I actually run at 3533, of course it shows half speed, because DDR means double data rate RAM, basically. And so 17 is normal, and normal is 21, 21, and with the clock you see here, 39, I can leave it at 39. This is normally, I believe, 81, which I'm actually running at 61 at the times, and it's testing if there, I can improve stability ever so slightly because I want the best of all worlds. So we slowed down the RAM just ever so slightly, but got much faster timings. Did you know tweaking your memory timings will actually work together with your RAM megahertz? So what's more important? Well, it depends on the program. Some depend more on the actual pure timings, some will be pure megahertz. Of course, you go halfway happy medium, like I did, actually lowering my timings quite decently. Odds are, in most programs, I'm definitely gaining extra performance. Don't forget to subscribe to Not BIOS. Leave a comment below because this video I made because I had two viewers comment that they can only reach 2933. And one person asked for a guide for more beginners. So if there's something you want to see, be it a different product, uh, maybe computer monitor tweaking or simply a CPU, just list below. And maybe one day you'll see that video. For now, have yourselves a most wonderful day. This is not BIOS, tech and hardware.